Hey folks, what's going on? Coming to you here from Almond Corporate Headquarters. Oh, here comes Mr. Keith with a load of soil. Just the way we like to see them. Nice heaping scoops. It's wet, so it's sticking. But this is coming off of a septic drain line. Nice and muddy here today. Could you even imagine getting in there with a wheeled skid steer? Not even like humanly or mechanically possible. That's what's so great about those tracks is they spread that weight out so well and uh, the ground pressure is so low, just so great. And speaking of spreading out the weight, our friends at ADS have bestowed upon us a bunch of pipe that we're supposed to talk about and teach people about pipe and bedding and all that kind of stuff. Jew fabrics, drain tiles, all sorts of stuff. We'll talk about that. We'll talk a few things real quick here about Jew fabrics and their uses. So. Uh, here is a, they sent us a bunch of geogrid, and this is a biaxial geogrid, so it has strength in two directions. Uh, so it can be used in a lot of varying circumstances. Uniaxial geogrid means it only has strength generally with the length of the roll, and these, uh, these things side to side are just little keepers. Uh, they wouldn't be uh, for strength. So various design things for when and what to use biaxial geogrid on. You would definitely want to consult with um, Versalock, Tecoblock, Unilock. All of them have design recommendations for utilizing geogrid and retaining walls and things like that. Uh, you really want to talk to somebody that has design experience. If you're building a wall over four feet or has vehicular load on it or whatever, where you really need to have uh, somebody that knows design of like structural retaining walls. So be sure to consult with those folks. Uh, we've got rolls of uh, woven geotextile fabric here which you can see woven because the fibers are woven together in that crisscross pattern there and then you've got uh, non-woven which is like this felt uh, type application and SF is great for separation wrapping around French drains things like that um, you can even put it under parking lots and things like that to keep your soil separate from your base rock so they don't migrate back and forth I prefer in those cases to use this woven geotextile because uh, what what that stuff does is it has more strength, more tensile strength because the long fibers. So if weight pushed on here, it's pulling on fibers clear on down. So the the non-woven, this felt, it doesn't, you know, those fibers are only going, you know, a few, few, you know, few inches or whatever. So I'll show you here this whole, I don't even remember, the building's 8,400, 16, uh, let's see here, 20,000. I mean, there's probably 30,000 square feet to have this woven jute textile. And I'll show you here. This woven jute textile fabric, but it's under... So you can see how muddy that is in there, right? But the thing about it is, when I step on it, it distributes that weight out. If I were to step, which actually I'll show you here. Like I step in that mud, it's gonna sink and settle, but stepping on the jute fabrics, it kind of acts like a snowshoe, if you will. Here comes Mr. Keith passing by. I'll help Keith not take the door off my truck. That's definitely something I would do. We've got, again, all this fabric under here, uh, so it spreads out the load. Now it's a little bit overkill here where this base is like two or three feet thick because we had to do that to get this built up. But here is also, this is the ADS HP Storm pipe, and this stuff is stronger, even stronger, and it's for, for spe more specific applications of just a, the regular N12 double wall. This is gonna go out front and fill in our culvert out front across the uh, roadway there. And uh, we had a video further back in the channel, check it out, uh, talking about and how to bed these things in. We'll do another video about how to bed these things in and do all that. Here is $100 a stick PVC. Isn't that crazy? Six inch PVC. We had to do that to sleeve our uh, our, our septic, our sanitary line there coming out where it crosses this roadway. We had to sleeve that four inch pipe inside of that six inch. So that gives us um, uh, more protection as machines and stuff come over and go back and forth on here. So we're, uh, we're working on Mr. Keese getting 
Uh, materials moved around here that whole delivery of ADS pipe out there. Advanced drainage systems. I'll show you inside real quick. So Keith, I do, he's got a list of things to do here today. And one of them is getting our uh, stone, or I'm sorry, our stone, our spoils, or uh, our soil out of here. We dug a drain line in for our sanitary here today. That goes into the bathrooms for uh, the office and then the shop. This line comes out and around to a floor drain and then it's gonna snake over here and run along the office wall over to the break room where there's gonna be a wash, there's gonna be a slop sink here in the, there's gonna be a, slink, a sink right here that guys can wash up before they come into the break room. There'll be another sink in here and this will be the break room in this area right here. My office far back corner. Uh, it's awesome. So that's kind of the shop update at the moment. What else we got going on here? Um, this soil is supposed to leave here in the next dry day, which have been rare here lately in the year 2022 spring. Here's the bad thing about the recycled concrete is you'll run into this issue once in a while where there's some rebar or some mesh, wire mesh left in that stuff and tire popper. I ordered a load of this one and a half inch, two inch stuff. I thought it was gonna be bigger river rock type stone. It's not what I wanna see. So I'll have to blend that with some over, oversized rock, which actually I need to get ordered in. Here's a big pile of that number two stone. We're again, concrete recycled. Some of the manufacturers of it actually have some really clean, really clean material with very little rebar and mesh and metal in it. Other manufacturers have a lot of it. So it kind of matters. This is like, they're calling it 304 but it's a, a fines with uh, oversized, you know, number two stone in it. So that needs compacted. This is relatively compact as it sits. Um, this is the greatest thing about having our shop. We're going to have so many new uh, bins. So once that soil leaves, we put all these materials are gonna go back there in storage bins. It's gonna be the greatest thing ever. This is that number nine clean stone. And uh, this is what we use for paver bedding, retaining wall bedding pipe bedding, you name it, number 57 here. I speak it, I speak on this ad nauseum all the time, but that's okay. Um, and that's number 57 clean, which um, is great for your primary base of walls and even paper jobs, which there's more videos back on the channel here, you know, talking about that. So uh, we'll go out front here, talk about some more uh, materials that we've got here from ADS. This actually here too is a wild thing. This is the Infiltrator brand. This is what, uh, for our septic system, they're gonna be using out in that field out there that's marked off because you're not allowed to run any machinery over it ever uh, until day of install. But let me show you these crazy. So this is our leach field. So in the in rural areas, instead of your all your, your sewer water and stuff going into, uh, you know, going into the sanitary system of the city, out in the country, let's say you use a leach field. But uh, norm, traditionally you would bury like perforated pipe out in the yard, but this is a new product, well not new, I guess. This is a, a product called Infiltrator, another uh, partner of ADS. But you dig a trench in the ground, dig a trench out there and you lay these things in there and they centipede kind of all together and they link together. One, two, three, all that. In this void space, so then your pipe comes from when you flush a toilet, goes in a septic tank, the fluids you know come out of that then just the liquid that's how a septic system works and just the liquids go in here and you you know you bury this of course right and so those the liquids then leach into the ground and uh so you bury all these things we'll have a whole video on this we'll show you uh how that works but these are pretty cool but it saved you having to bring in a bunch of stone or uh do a lot more excavating stuff like that so all that pipe in the office there or in the building we're going to backfill all that pipe that we put in just a four inch pot tile we're going to backfill that with the number 57 limestone for pipe bedding because it's stronger that way Tr putting all that soil back in there we would have to you know very aggressively and diligently compact all of that uh, soil out there or not out there in there in the building and uh we don't want to we don't want to deal with that labor so it's easier just to export it and be done now if i'd had my druthers i would have had our buggy here while i was digging that out and loaded the buggy out and so we don't double handle the material too much but 
uh, you know, as Pap says, Rome wasn't built in a day. So with that being said, uh, we'll run out front here and look at some more product. Okay, so we're out front. So we got some rolls of perforated pipe here, which is just ADS standard uh, single wall perforated pipe. You can see down through there. And this stuff is all gonna get buried out through all our low spots there to dry this area up to make it more usable because we're collecting about 150 acres of water runoff coming down in through here. And so we're gonna pull that out of there with that tile. It's gonna be awesome. So just your standard ADS, single wall perforated pipe. So those slits, those knife cut slits are called perforations. Uh, here in the, for the downspouts of the building, we're gonna be using this uh, ADS dual wall. And you can, you know it's ADS when you see the green stripe, that's like their thing. But this is a dual wall per, uh, corrugated pipe. So corrugated is this, are these ripples, right? And so we're gonna be using this stuff on the building downspouts. So you can see the black downspouts way yonder there. And uh, we're gonna put elbows on there and then tie into that and, and all this stuff. It's gonna go into a big rainwater cistern tank, like a 5,000 gallon cistern tank uh, that we're gonna use to wash trucks and water plants with from harvested rainwater off the building. Won't that be so cool? I'm so excited about that. More HP Storm pipe, um, more HP Storm standard double wall. We got some more geofabrics. Again, big thanks to ADS. So next time you buy ADS, tag, uh, tag us and them on Instagram. That would mean the world to us. I got water line for Brittany. Here's what she wants to do someday. And I don't want to do it, but I try to be a decent husband sometimes. We're going to run a water line from the building back out front here because someday she wants to have like a little plant shop or something someday down the road little farm farm stand, farmer's market kind of stand thing, whatever. Uh, more geofabrics, more of this biaxial geo grid. That's super awesome. <sighs> yeah, let's go up here and look at this pipe because the 15 inch black double wall pipe, we're going to put, we're going to continue to put, we're gonna fill in the ditch up here and I have to fill in farther this way to make this wider so semi trucks and bigger trucks can get in here. So that's what we're gonna have to do. You can see here too, the geofabric coming through where we cut, where we did our the end of our install here. And I did what I did here along the road was, the road had a pretty decent shoulder. So I left the shoulder intact because I didn't want to dig right up to the road because I would begin to potentially undermine the road edge. So we left a little shoulder of the existing base and then cut down. And uh, then we wrapped it in geofabric to help, uh, you know, just help strengthen that whole shoulder there. So. Uh, you're welcome greenfield township <laughs> but uh but i wanted to try to protect that road from all that construction so then we got our, our our pipe here and you can see we're running through there you can see that dip in the top of us where somebody ran over with a bulldozer I'm not gonna name names and i've hit plenty of stuff with the dozer don't get me wrong but it wasn't me i think i don't think it was me this time i don't know but this pipe is is buried with there's an envelope of stone all the way around this thing. So you get that stone, you, you can, a circle is a very strong shape if it's embedded properly, right? So there's stone, there's 57 stone all around this pipe. And that makes that circle, makes it a very strong structure. So that being said, we're gonna run a, a we're gonna run that pipe all across here and, uh, and fill this in. And it's gonna be awesome sauce. We've got temporary electric in here for now. And uh, this is all set up. Pap did a really nice job on this. It's beautiful. Um, and uh, we're gonna run our temporary electric line. So we've got lighting in there because it's really dark. Also reminds me, I regret not putting in more windows. So you build a building, put in lots of windows. Yeah, lots of cool stuff going on, folks. So another part of the shop update, which I completely forgot about, is we had a company, TCM, I think it's Troy Miller, Troy C. Miller, maybe out of uh, Washington Courthouse, Ohio, come to our, our seamless gutters. I think they call them rolled seamless gutters. 
uh, did black on the building, really sharp. Guys did a real nice job. Uh, the gutters are guttering because it rained earlier and uh, doing all that, but really sharp, beautiful black uh, aluminum there. And uh, oh, they mitered, so they mitered the edges a little bit. That's a cool, that's a nice, uh, yeah, they did that all the way up. So that's cool. Uh, nice uh, thing there. You don't have sharp corners. So that's a nice little touch there, guys. I'm watching. But these, these downspouts here are what will tie into a giant tank that we're going to bury roughly about right here, a 5,000 gallon tank. And then we're going to plumb it in with our friend, help from our friends at Rain Brothers. Uh, check them out on Instagram, at Rain Brothers. If you can hear me, there's Mr. Keith. Uh, I'll try to get out of the wind here. But there will be a 20 foot concrete pad going out and we'll be able to wash trucks on there. That, that'll just be awesome. But uh, it's crazy how the downspouts, these black downspouts, provide such a nice finished uh, aesthetic to the building. It's just awesome. So I didn't think the downspouts would make that much difference. Uh, those were $3,300, both sides and the porch. I didn't think it was a terrible price, about 10 bucks a linear foot, give or take. So that's that. That's the building where it stands as of now. Doors are getting put on next week. The soil's supposed to leave on the next dry day. Lots to do, lots going on. And now my current thing, my current dilemma, frankly, is the gate system across the front here, by the way. So there's going to be a gate here where this chain link fence ends. So we had uh, fence connections. A company, Langster, put in a fence for us here. Um, and uh, chain link fence system here which I bought the materials because he was griping at me for buying a small top rail. I guess that's not like ideal or awesome. And he upgraded our end post to three foot or three inches, I think that is. So whatever. But this fence is gonna go across and go, go to the building there. We had to uh, take a call from Mr. Bo there. He's had a little situation on his project. But here's the thing. We gotta do, the way the, way the plan was, was to have this fence run across here and then talking to my fence guy, we're gonna do a four foot man, man gate down here, fence across here, and then do a 24 foot wide uh, gate across here. That would be sliding, it slides across. Well, the more I think about this, the more I hate the idea. And I'm trying to figure out a way I can do this and it work out. I hate this not being open, but we really gotta lock the building up, I believe. Uh, I'm really trying to figure out what to do here because trucks will be parked outside. Uh, I really want to help secure this area or whatever. So if you have any thoughts, shoot me a DM, comment section, whatever, but 24 foot gate down here and then fence and then a four foot man gate there. So we come out and around and do this, but I don't love the idea of fence across here. Uh, really trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I don't know, uh, but that's it. So that's the shop update coming along as soon as we get our plumbing in then we can get our radiant flooring uh situation in and start pouring concrete and that's the next big thing so really looking forward to that but we rented this machine and i am so glad i went with a 308 instead of a 306 ah, maybe a 306 will do us save a little money no and this is my kind of my takeaway is like if you think the job needs a mini skid steer loader, but maybe a full-size skid steer is going to be a little more productive, on tracks, by the way, get the bigger machine. It's the, the productivity, because I'll tell you another thing that hurt us productivity-wise today is not having a skid steer on site. That would have been, I almost brought our, our 595 out, and we made it work. I didn't want to trailer it an hour and a half away, so I was maybe just being lazy. <clears throat> but I know... With that being said, you could have fed me stone probably a lot faster, right? Instead, yeah. I had to walk at 308 back and forth 40,000 times. <laughs>